welcome to Nerd Girls. I'm FM, and this is FM's Notes. So we get to see... <laughs> so the recap shows Chloe saying it won't stop, and we're terrified because her nose is bleeding, and we're like, Lucifer, save her. And then the episode immediately starts, and she says, Lucifer, stop. Like, her nose is stopped. She's like, stop driving like you're a crazy person. And we're like, oh, that was like a one second of panic. And then she's like, maybe I have it, maybe I don't. Oh, maybe there's a scratch. Just kind of awkward. Uh, that does tie in with her not wanting to tell anybody for some strange reason, which, you know, it's not believable, but I would give it to them if she didn't have a child with Detective Douche. Detective Dan, you have to tell the father of your child that you may have been injected with something that's gonna kill you in 24 hours. That's just irresponsible parenting. I understand that they didn't want to have all the characters panic and want to save Chloe right away because they, pacing wise, they wanted to save it for this big climactic third act, which it was a great third act. However, it's not believable just to have a secret just so that you can move around the pieces until you, you need them to explode. Have it explode and be messy right away and then you can see kind of where that takes everything. She should have told Dan, she should have told uh, beautiful science nerd whose glasses I want whose name I can't remember, right away. This was just told everybody, I could be infected, walking disease, death. So, does, does Dr. Linda need to say, clear, every time she's trying to bring a black? Is it just, it's just her and Maze in the room, right? It's like, Maze, clear. Why, why are you saying clear? <laughs> why is she saying well, it? Say clear. <laughs> I know, clear. There's nobody in there. There's nobody. I know. <laughs> don't, don't get me started on that one. It's written so well, I just wish I could say it out of my mouth the same way I have it written on my notes. I, like, I was still unclear if Lucifer's mom was team Zoe. Uh, she wants them together, she doesn't want them together. She kept flip-flopping until she finally grieves the death of her son in hell and takes responsibility for her part in everything. Then at the end of the episode, when she said that she was sorry and loved Lucifer. I believed it. When she, her heart broke, when she's holding her son and she's realizing I could just stay in hell because it's a fantasy and having my family together is better than reality where my son is dead. And she is pulled out by Lucifer and they have that bonding moment. She went in for him, he came out for her and it's sort of a refocusing of purpose. It made, it made her more believable as a character and more likable. And, and it made me understand why she flip-flopped, which before I had had a note that it just was kind of eating away at my brain. It's like, okay, she wants Zoe dead, she wants him with her, whatever. But once she claimed responsibility for that, it was really nice, but then what it did was it made Lucifer's reaction not believable. They had this intense emotional connection moment with Lucifer, with Amenadiel, with her and her sons, and, and it, didn't make sense then for him to react so extreme. And somehow that made his reaction, wanting to run away from Chloe and rebuke his mother, unbelievable, especially after how they had bonded in hell. So she became more believable, and so did the relationship of uh, the three, Lucifer, his mother, and his brother, Amenadiel. But then it made Lucifer's reaction less believable. So, mm, checks and balances, people. So that's it for my quick notes. If you want to see more reactions from me and Becca for our full overview of the episode, check out, subscribe to our channel and check out our other episodes and visit our website at twonerdgirls.com. See you next time.